Hello and welcome back. It's the Clay Golem. We are back in Foundry VTT looking at the Curse of Strahd. In the previous video we looked at the beginnings of creating our landing page. We put in this interactive map up here, put in our picture of Strahd to look over the party every time they're here. We included a character portrait here. Obviously this will be extended into these other picture frames as we get the portraits for our actual players. We'll make those amendments. Um, and we put in uh, one of these items that they find throughout. Um, it's currently invisible because until they find it, uh, they are, it's, they're not going to, I don't want them to see it. <laughs> I don't want them to be looking at it uh, until we're ready to do uh, that particular bit and then all we'll do is unhide it and they can find it. I also moved it, it was on the desk, I've just moved it hanging over here for reasons that will become obvious. Um, I also created a loot box down here for their little chest thing for party loot uh, which I've inadvertently destroyed while doing something else. Never mind. Okay so what are we doing in this video? We're going to continue with this and make some of the connections but to save you having to laboriously watch me do stuff repeatedly especially copy and pasting you've seen enough of that um, I have been through the journal uh, I've renamed it party journal and I have taken all of the handouts from the official module like this invitation from Strad and uploaded these as images so in case you're not sure what I'm talking about you can see in any journal add page I've given it a name and I've selected image and then just selected these images to upload. So we've got the various journals, the Van Richten pieces. Now I decided to not include the translations or rather the plain English typed version. They can work it out. <laughs> it's up to them. Um, but what you will notice is I've got these little eyes, purple eyes next to all of these because if I go to configure ownership you'll see all players is none. So players cannot see these until they discover them through the course of play and then they'll be made available and then they can come and have a little butchers and a look. Now also on here I have got a final one called notes and for this configure ownership I've got all players are owner. So the idea being is, is that they can use this to make any notes that they want uh, to expand their journal. So the idea is this one journal is the player's resource for everything that they need, the notes that they find, the notes that they make, etc, etc. So in this video we need to basically do some linking up of those things uh, and then have a little check to make sure it works. All right, so where do we start? Uh, let's go to our tile browser. There we go. And I've already had a little play just to check some things work. And I've created a few... Um, a few little uh, templates here, just words and things for us to put in the places we want. So I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller. Uh, it's probably about that size. Double click and I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees because I want that to fit, because it doesn't of course. Whoops. I want that to fit onto the spine of that book. Okay. Now I know what you're thinking, it's quite small, um, but I will indicate to them that they now have a new book on their shelf. Uh, so players can come along and will be able to click on that. So let's make sure that that is clickable. So if I double click it right now, of course this is a tile. Uh, it's not overhead, no animations. Um, this is all fine. But I want to go to triggers. I want it to be active. I want anybody to be able to do it and I want them just to click on it. Allow when paused, not worried about sight for those. 100% uh, chance to trigger of course and the actions are going to be effectively open that journal page. Uh, now what exactly is that called? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Is it going to be O for open? Open a journal, excellent. <laughs> so which entity? Open the party journal uh, and this is Tome of Strahd, so I want to pick Tome of Strahd Volume 1. That is what that's going to open and only show it to the triggering player. Uh, and it says I can open it as an image. Now let's have a look and see what that looks like. Let's do it without that at the moment. So update that tile, job done. Now if I click on that, boom, that's opening the party journal and it's showing them this right here, which is great. Now, if I change that, 
So it was in, in actions to open as an image. If that is, I have no idea if this is going to do anything at all, to be honest. Uh, nope, it's just opening it as normal. Okay, so that doesn't seem to make any difference. Now, I have the option to show players images and to send it to chat. Uh, it may well be that the players will be able to do that as well. Don't have a problem if they can. I want to make this slightly, just slightly bigger. Oh, that's not the right way to do it, is it? Okay, so I want to make this slightly longer. Under basic, one, uh, what about 115? Is that good enough? What do you think? Because we want to make it so that they can actually see the darn thing. Okay, so what happens if I copy and paste that and stick it on the next one? Double click on this and I'm going to change the image uh, and I want this to be volume 2. But uh, I also want the triggers the same but the action is going to be to open Strad Volume 2. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, that show his image doesn't seem to make any difference. Okay, so in theory we've got two books there. We can click on this one, it opens Strad Version 1, of Volume 1 rather, and this one opens Volume 2. So that's nice, that works. And yes, they might need, I mean they can zoom in themselves of course. Okay, they only need to know it's there. They're not going to be visiting it tons and tons. And they will be able to go to the journal in the right-hand side and access it anyway once they're made available. All right, we've got a couple more to do. And to be honest, the easiest way is to just pick one of these, uh, copy, paste it, and then we drag it. Uh, and we're going to be picking a couple of these bigger books here. Uh, but we want to change the image. Uh, and the image we're going to have is... Van Richten's guide. Let's just update. That's nice and red. It's a, a different. Um, it's a different font. Let me have a click off of that. A bit clearer because it's in red on the blue, um, so it's a bit easier for them to see. I just want to adjust that position slightly. Okay, and of course I do need to update this trigger to say anyone clicking on it. Yes, that's all good. Uh, but we are going to open Van Richten's. Volume 1. Nice and easy. Lovely. Right, let's copy that and paste that. Then we're going to stick that on the next book. And then, of course, what we're going to do is pretty much the same. We're going to update the image to Van Richten's Volume 2. And we're going to be looking at those actions. And we want this to open the journal Von Richten, Rudolf Van Richten, <laughs> Volume 2. <laughs> Get there in the end. There we go. So nice and easy. We've got some books that are interactable now. Obviously the Van Richten ones are much easier to see. Oops, I double clicked it there. Uh, much easier to see uh, the titles of those. The volumes of Strahd, not so much. So it's possible that we would want to change those colours and make those. I didn't want them to have them all red though because that, that looks a bit silly. Um, but yeah, and the really good thing is we've got a number of other books available. Right, what else do we need to add on here? Uh, Back to my tiles, back to my tile browser. Um, do, 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 I need to, I'm going to need to grab uh, the next one because I haven't put these up yet. Uh, so I'm going to put the invitation letter on, which is huge. Let's <laughs> shrink that down. Makes sense. Uh, and we're going to lean that up over here. Okay, so that's why I moved this um, emblem here because when they get the invitation, again, this is going to be hidden until they get it. When they do, um, the trigger for this is going to be anyone allows with a simple click. Absolutely fine. Activated. Allow when paused. Don't need vision for it. That's all good. And the action, again, is going to be uh, open journal, same party journal. So it's all in one place. And actually the first page is an invitation. Show it to only the triggering player. Update, save. So when we click on this one, boom, we get the invitation. So it's going to be sitting on the desk when they get there. We've got a few more like that to do. And I think this is a really kind of nice way of doing it, of having the room slowly get busier uh, as they go through and find the different clues and stuff like that. Uh, let's take this 
uh, invitation, this uh, this letter here. Again, it's huge, but that's all right. We'll just shrink it down. Uh, and this one, we're going to lean up against the globe, make it a little bit smaller. Um, and same as before, we want to open it up, go to our triggers, make sure it's active even when paused. Don't worry about vision. We want to make this when clicked on by anybody, which is all good. Add, and we want to open <coughs> journal, same journal, and this is uh, so. This is the two letters. So, um, Koil Koi Kol Yans. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Letter one and two. Um, again, just to the triggering player. Okay, good. And then another one, because you may have noticed I've got two of those. Pump that in. Make that. A different size uh, and we can pop this one in front so same again set up triggers yes when paused by anybody on a click actions are uh, open journal same same journal and we want letter number two just for the triggering player job done and of course we want to hide those for now uh, I need to hide these books too okay so they're all hidden right what else have I got to do uh, let me just check how many things are actually had ready for this. I need to do my loot box again because I wrecked it. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> okay, so uh, choose file. Uh, I did create a party loot um, tile here and I'm going to stick this down here and I, I managed to angle the lettering slightly so it matches along there. So this one is going to, if we go back to our actors, of course we had party stash there. So again, happy to have this. Go to triggers, active, yes. Allowed when pause, yes. Don't need vision. Again, this is going to be a when click on. Anybody clicks on it and the action is going to be, instead of open journal, it is open actor sheet. We're going to select that actor, party stash. Show it only for the triggering player, update, bosh, done. So if we click on this letter, it opens up. This letter opens up. We can click on the books. We can click on the invitation. We can click on the party loot and we get that. And of course we can click on the map and we can click on the character sheet. So all of those bits work. And we've got this item here that we is non-clickable. It's just for show. Okay, did I miss anything at this point? Yes, yes I did. I've missed one. Okay, we need another one of these books. Now, in hindsight, I think I might have a slight problem with this book, but let's give it a go anyway, um, because it is this one. Now, what do they actually call it? Uh, yeah, well, that's not worked, is it? That's not what we want at all. Yeah, that's that's not worked. <laughs> it's not even close to what I want. Um, hang on, let me just make an amendment in the background because I think what it's doing, it's going, oh, you've got the same name. Uh, therefore, I'm not bringing it in. So I've just updated that name on that one. There we go. I've got one that actually works now. That's what I want. Um, now, it, we may have a problem. This one's already on an angle, which is great. Uh, might have a problem with the fact that that text is just going to be too dark on there. But again, we want this as a trigger. Uh, active yes allow when paused yes don't worry about vision when we click on it same as the others we're going to open that journal find O uh, back to our journal at the top there we want to open our party journal and we want to open this one the journal here uh, and again just for the triggering player so they can be looking at different things at different times um, and we have that on there okay so Let's uh, make sure we've hidden that one. Thank you very much. 
And in theory, this is pretty much good to go. We've got all the important things in there, you know, party loot, <laughs> our journal entries and stuff. So how about we check to make sure that this actually works as intended from a player point of view. So uh, don't need to worry about it being paused, except it's not anyway. So this is me logged in as Haley. Um, so I created a new player, you can see the bottom left hand corner, and logged in as a new player called Haley for the character Haley. So this is what Haley can see as a player. Party loot, yes, thank you very much. I can access that. I can, or I can also access my character sheet. And if you remember yesterday, she dumped her tinderbox in here. We should be able to. Okay, this this is <laughs> this is why we check stuff because it's not letting me take it. So obviously it set something up slightly wrong on that. Let's let's fix that right now, shall we? Okay, so that's going to be a part of the actor issue, I would think. Uh, configure this pile, something I've slightly missed. Enabled, yes, interaction distance, um, leave empty for infinite, that would help because I've not got taken tokens on here. So that might have been what it was. Uh, allow item inspect, split items. Uh, we don't want any macros running, although we could. We could put, a, you know, on interact, it makes a creak noise. We could do that. Uh, item stack, yes, yes, yes. Uh, don't worry about all of that lot. Other settings, restrict access, no. Um, manage access. Again, we don't need to do that. It's so that you can have Haley only, um, etc. But if we leave everything off, that should work just fine. He said, confidently, he said. Let's check. All right, Haley, try again. <laughs> try again, my friend. Okay, party loot. Yes, brilliant. Let's open our character sheet. Can I nick that now? No, so I've still got something wrong. I can put stuff in there. But I can't take it out again. Okay, I'll fix it. I will fix it. Because that's clearly not working by uh, as designed, is it? Um, so we can click on that. I can move stuff around as the DM, as you would absolutely hope. Um... I wonder if it is that permissions. I didn't think I had to add permissions on. Uh, actually, just want to double check that. Definitely, so no, we don't want it deleting it at that point. Um, is it because I haven't got the haven't got the character on thing? I shouldn't need to have the character on there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's manage access. Let's add Haley on with all of those abilities. She can do anything she likes. Um, not restricted access. Let's see if that works for Haley now. I wasn't expecting to encounter an issue. <laughs> okay, right. Click on it again. Here's the party loot. Haley can now. Everything's on top of itself. Come over here. Haley can now, there we go. Okay, so I did have to give manually give her permissions. I thought it defaulted to everybody having permissions. It doesn't, lesson learned. That's why we do these things. Okay, so map works for Haley. Yeah, which is great. Uh, the portrait doesn't do anything. These other things are hidden. Interesting. I can still click these things. Oh, it's just taking me to notes. So I can still click on those, which I shouldn't, I was because, ah, uh, right. It's because they're active, even if they're invisible. But it's only taking me to her journal where I've got the notes. Um, which is, you know, fine. Haley can update this. Hurrah. So Haley can add her notes to that, which is great. Boom. She can add her notes, but she can't see any of these other bits, which is great because we don't want her to. All right, let's make some adjustments then. Oh, that's over here. Uh, let's now say that um, we have. Oh, do you want to do that? We've now got access to this. Uh, we've got access to this one, uh, and we've collected one of those letters. Now, what I need to do, of course, is in the journal make a corresponding uh, update to, for example, the invitation, configure ownership, all players are observers. So. Now, back to Haley. she can see this letter, she can click on it, but I can only see the invitation, uh, which oddly enough is hidden. Um, so I can click on these, but it will open the journal, but it won't show me what I want. 
classically I've hidden the wrong thing or unhidden the wrong thing. So the invitation is there. Um, which letter was this one? <laughs> this is why I need to set everything up beforehand. So this is uh, Coilian's letter version number one. So in the party journal, Coilian's version letter number one, I can configure ownership and set to observer. Lovely. Back to Haley. When she opens her journal, she can takes us straight to Coilin's letter, um, but she can also see the invitation because that's now available and go to a note. So this is going to slowly build. And what I do like is this renumbering on the left hand side is renumbering based on what she can see. It's not going zero one seven. It's like oh, there's some one, there's ones missing in the middle there. Wonder what they are. It doesn't do that. So they won't know how many pieces to collect or anything like that as they go. So um, this seems to be working pretty darn well. What I will do is, and we've looked at this before, is I think I'll create some buttons off scene for each of those clues down the side so that when I click that button, so just an active tile trigger, let's, in fact, let's do one now. Let's do it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, uh, let's select the invitation. Let's try that. Hello, come on, pop it out. Okay, so I'm going to put a copy of the invitation here. Now this is only going to be for the DM to see. And for this invitation, what I want to do is when I click it, uh, so on triggers, active, yes, allow when paused, yes. Uh, this is GM only clicks on it. Then the actions, what we want to do is if we can, uh, we can activate that tile okay so that way the players can't click on it before it's actually activated we want to show hide uh, show hide that hang on hang on Get out of it. Get out of it. Get off of... Ah, doesn't like it when you're already selected on something. All right, let's do these... Oh, set up. This is for this tile. Oh, sorry about that. Got a little bit wrong there. Okay, right. So triggers. It is active, yes, for the GM. When they click on this tile, which can happen when it's paused, the actions we want it to do are... Activate, deactivate that tile. We want to activate it. Update. We want to sh 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 show hide that that tile. See what I mean? It doesn't like it if I do this one, and then I change it back. Then it works. It doesn't like it if it's already um, <sighs> selected. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. So we activate it. We want to show it. Now, this is the tricky bit that I don't know how to do. So learning with the clay golem is I want to change permissions in the party journal for an invitation. Change for everyone. Permission. No. Change for players. Permission to observer. Okay, that's what I want that button to do. Let's save it. Okay, and then let's reset these things. So let's make sure that is hidden. Um, obviously, we're working on the invitation specifically at the moment. So let's make sure that uh, under triggers, we've got setup. This is not activated at the moment. Okay, so let's just check this is okay for Haley as we want. So back to Haley again. She cannot see that invitation and clicking where that invitation is isn't doing anything. She can still click on these other ones. Okay. That all works. Uh, what I do need to do, of course, is I just need to reset this back to the invitation to uh, all players, none. Okay, so Haley can't see it. So in theory, as the DM, which is what I am now, if I click on this, it should reveal this invitation icon down here and activate it so that Haley can see it. So we click on that. Visually, I could see that that 
popped into being. Haley can now see it. She can now click on it and gets visual over the party journal. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm just and she can't see obviously the little action switch over there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a little series of these down here. So as clues become evident, um, I can just click on them and reveal those. Uh, it might be nice to have a reset one as well, just for testing that will hide everything again. All right. So uh, sorry about that. Um, but hey, we're all here to learn. Uh, you, you may not have known how to do that. So maybe that was a good thing. <laughs> going to pretend I did that on purpose. All right. So we're pretty much ready to go. On this scene I'm going to fiddle around make a couple of little alterations put these other triggers in to reveal the various bits of items on here uh, I've got obviously got to find the other artifacts um, and some images I want to do and have those scattered in here and then I can complete this scene uh, and then we want to move over to the first actual scene of play if you like um, and hopefully the next video, that's what we'll be looking at, is getting that set up. And I'll talk you through how I'm planning to start this adventure. I hope that's been useful, or at least entertaining, watching me flounder as always. Uh, thank you for watching. Do appreciate it very much. Leave a like and a comment would be great. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please do. It makes a huge difference. See you in the next one.